Well, the carriage has been sitting up for a few days inside now, or probably closer to a week. Uh, and it's warm enough now that I think I can leave it out here without it uh, freezing up anymore. Uh, the nuts that we had, or the coupler nuts that we casted in there, work perfectly. I sealed the bottom with hot glue so I have all the thread. Um, which is going to be important because we're going to have a piece of uh, a quarter inch maybe aluminum on here and then our top cross slide. And that'll give us something so we can kind of grab it like this so it can uh, be uh, rigid in both those directions and then we can it'll slide back and forth like a cross slide should. The uh, thing I'm going to work on right now is you can see here, actually you might be able to see easier from this side when the light's not so bright. This is right by my big window so I'm happy for the amount of light that I get while I work but when I take video it's kind of troublesome. Um, you can see the brass here in the aluminum. I'm going to tap a hole. Actually I'm just going to drill an undersized hole and put a, about an M3 socket head cap screw in there just to grab that piece of brass so it doesn't slide out. You can see I'd have room for a screw to, uh, I gotta focus, there we go, um, to protrude through without actually touching anything. And that'll affix the brass in there and then I can easily replace them without having to chip them out because they have glue on them. That little tunnel that we made for the lead screw worked out brilliantly. We'll build a little anti-backlash nut for, uh, actually probably the other side. It makes it more, will be more rigid undercutting. It's going to be annoying to try to advance the carriage back, but we'll build a split nut later once we have the lathe running. You can see on this side, I've built a similar little bearing block. This holds a half inch bearing. I didn't actually see and see cut this one. I lost foam cast it with uh, on my little charcoal foundry, but uh, so many videos on charcoal foundry set. I'll just leave it out of this one because this video is going to be long as is. And yeah, so I'm happy with that. That all turned out beautifully well. Obviously, same on this side. Got to develop a pulley for this and a thing to hold the chuck here. And uh, we'll have it licked here. Not not too much not too much work left. So let's keep going. All right, here's something pretty interesting. I gotta drill this hardened steel plate. I don't, I don't know why I'm choosing hardened steel, but it's it'll make a really good cross slide, um, and I have it. And this was a bearing plate. You can see there's a bunch of used to be a little roller uh, rollers that sat on the top here with some Delrin ends. And uh, they hardened these two plates, and it slid between some sort of machinery. Um, anyways, I can't drill it. Uh, you can see here that's with just a standard uh, your standard drill bit, and it just dulls the point to nothing. However my reading on the internet let me realize that a masonry bit uh, will actually cut hardened steel and I didn't believe it so I tried it and you can see here that's with the masonry bit I had to take a, a diamond wheel I have a little diamond wheel and cut a drilling point onto the end here because you can't really cut this with anything else um, and we got a clean hole through here so I'm gonna drill a uh, I'm going to drill six of them to mount this thing on. i got to get a bigger one of these masonry bits. This one isn't going to be large enough, but at least I can take the bulk of the material out. I uh, get about one hole, and then I have to go and uh, address the edges again here because the, uh, the metal is pretty aggressive on it. So let's get you in a little closer here. Let's see that. You'll see once, see if we can get through with it, but. Cuts wildly different than uh, you'd expect. It just turns the metal to dust, essentially. No real chips, because it's shattering like glass, essentially. But it's making its way through. I'm happy. Six more to go. Five more. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Early Saturday morning, and I'm determined to get this thing finished today. You can see this is where we kind of left off, drilling those holes for this uh, cross slide. Got them finished. Used a few of my cheap masonry bits, but the job was done. In the future, don't use hardened steel. Use something else, because that was a stupid waste of time. But it'll be nice and rigid now, so I, I guess I can't call it stupid. It's just a, a different use of time. This is my cross slide, how it's going to work. You can see I have the slots in it to clear the screw holes. 
Um, all this was milled. Obviously these things were milled to catch and register under here and they'll be bolted into the slot, into the side. Um, if you don't have a milling machine, which is crazy because you should use one, they're awesome. Uh, you could just use a larger piece for this cross slot and then cut a section off and that would be your matched piece and that way it's the same width. And uh, for these fancy L's I've milled, you could just use a, um, either aluminum angle of a thicker variety or you could just use steel angle and just deal with a little radius corner and, um, and then just bolt them all together. I made this so that when I bolt it together, uh, this fit will be a little bit probably too tight on this and then I'll just be able to use some shim stock between here to kind of widen it up till it slides nicely. Um, that's about the easiest way to go about it if you don't have means of making nice precision edges. Uh, HDPE anti-backlash nut, temporary, just to get this thing running. Nothing fancy about that. And here we have some adapters that I'm going to end up using to mount the three jaw on the front. I said it was a four jaw, it's a three jaw. Um, I just found a better deal on a larger three jaw. So. And same on the back for the pulley. We're gonna drill into it, tap it, mount the pulley, motor under here, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you can see here, now that I have this rod through, I have a little locking nut that I made to put tension on this rod and then lock its position. And on this side, I made a little hand wheel, cast it of aluminum, out of aluminum. I gotta make a little speed handle for it, but I'm gonna use a lathe to make that. This is gonna be the last piece for the carriage. We're gonna tap some holes into the top and That'll be my tool post. Um, and then I got my obviously tools that will affix into the side. And uh, yeah, put some hand wheels or mounts on here so we can put a hand wheel on the front. Probably cast another handle for that hand wheel, but for the time being, we'll just use threaded rod. And that will be everything. So let's get motoring. Here's the carriage. I went ahead and tapped those holes as well for the tool post. See how it all goes together. You probably can't see on camera, but there is some, there on this side, uh, there's some pop can shim stock. I just cut a piece of a pop can open and use uh, three pieces on either side to shim this one gib out a little bit so it slides onto here. Snug fit, nothing's finalized yet, but it's not bad. I gotta lap it and then oil it so it slides smoothly, but it's getting there, you can still see just a little bit of play left, so that'll come in once I do the final tighten on these and have it on a lap surface so it's not just running on the ragged edges right now. One thing I probably could do is take off this middle portion because right now that's a reference surface as well, which is needs to be lapped a bit. As you can see, it's wearing away at it, but um, the more surface I can have touching this thing, the more rigid the carriage will be, so I think I'm gonna leave it for now, and if it really presents problems, I will um, lap it. Or lap it, get rid of it. Just mill it down, but so far so good. And what do we got going on now? Oh, here you can see the fun part of building a lathe from scratch is this. <laughs> Lots of time with that tool cutting plates. This is all half inch plates, so hacksaw skills are gonna be super proficient when this is done. Well, it's about noon now and the sun is in full force for making everything wonderfully bright and also difficult to shoot video into it. Uh, you can see these are the pieces that I cut earlier. Oh, that was hacksawing earlier and I took down to the mill and I squared them up. Then I milled a slot in there that's just undersized compared to how thick this plate is. So when these go on, it clicks on quite firmly. I, I don't want to put it on because it's hard to get off. Um, I then uh, I put it on and then I put two bolts in here and once they tighten up, they pull the whole unit down nice and tight. To drive this carriage back and forth, I'm simply going to drill a hole through here which, which threaded rod will ride through to the one on the back side. And uh, this is the threaded rod I'll use. And what I'm going to use, so I can find it now, I've just placed it down. Ah. This little piece, piece of uh, UHMW, the actual other piece that I said was HDP is also UHMW. Um, and then I'm going to uh, tap a hole through it right here and that'll mount on the, well, that side, but I'll show you on this side for clarity. It'll mount like this, and then there'll be a single uh, attachment point here, and that'll drive this whole carriage back and forth until I design something better. But 
That'll get it running. Hazel, what are we making? Anyways, we got the carriage done. I got the UHMW block there. I went with 516th rod just for space allowance. I try to get this as low as I can so I don't uh, interfere with my ability to turn things. Uh, nothing fancy, like I said, a hole here, a couple nuts jammed together on the back. Same deal on the front. I put a spider coupler on here just so I could turn it by hand. And then we'll use a lathe to make some nice hand wheels. I also said I was gonna make a pulley. I just bought one right now. It's a cast iron one, it's like 20 bucks, 25 bucks or something. Uh, and then we'll get the lathe running with this and then we can make pulleys if we wanna make pulleys. I think I'll end up just going with a, uh, uh, like a spindle, a speed controlled spindle and not have to worry about switching out pulleys. But that's for another time. You can also see I cut down the shafting and put the little uh, collar, whatever thing I'm gonna call this to bolt the big aluminum plate on here and then turn the plate to mount the chuck on there. So that's the next step. Actually the next step is getting it spinning. So we're gonna mount that pulley on the back side here and mount the motor down there somewhere and use that fancy belting to couple it all together. <laughs> Pulley's on, the motor's on, the belt's on. The cat's on the table. Everything's going good. I got this aligned nearly perfectly. I'm super happy with it. I ended up scribing inside that black ring, line this up by eye, use the bolts as transfer punches, punched them, drilled, tapped, put it all together, and it's working great. That motor mount, or the motor I should say, is actually mounted to that beam I put across for really no apparent reason. Uh, it turned out that it worked perfectly to mount the motor to, and then I got a little uh, rubber foot on the top to put tension on the belt. Super solid, wired it up to a switch. Pico is excited. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire it up. I'm gonna find center of the shaft so that I can start, wa start working on the uh, tool holder. Perfect. 